live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing, anyway? Death in entertainment. All right, well, let's jump into it. Um, we have here the legendary... You know him from Twitter. You know him from Family Guy. You know him from the movie Ted. Mr. Alex Sulkin is here with us. Hey. Hey. hey hello, guys. You, you you people remember Twitter, right? Yes, I, I used to be on that. <laughs> hey, on the cusp hey. on the cusp of Twitter ending. Why not? Yeah. I ceremoniously have on Alex Sulkin. Yeah. I hope, I hope Twitter goes away. Don't you guys kind of hope it goes away? You oh yeah. A, you could do a death in, in entertainment about Twitter when it dies. Yeah. That is true. I would happily stop on the grave of Twitter and just happy that it's all over. <laughs> Let me say before we start that, um, you know, I, you know, I do a podcast with my buddy Goldie and I don't listen to podcasts. I never did. Never. They weren't. I just listen to music that I've heard a thousand times. I like that much better. <laughs> but then when we started doing one, I started to kind of check out like a couple of them, maybe a, a handful. And yours is the only one that I ever go back to and listen more of. Oh, man. Wow, yeah. what a wow. compliment. It's true. it's true. Like, I mean, oh, needless to say, I listen to my own ad nauseum. <laughs> <laughs> and will often bump you guys for that. But I, when I do, it's like, you know, when I do drink beer, it's yeah. the, it's yeah. the uh, Death and Entertainment podcast. Wow. All right. Thank you. Uh, I, I heard last night that you listened to yours at a... a, a time and a half speed or something i tried that no, that no, no. one and a quarter <laughs> one and a quarter one yeah a quarter. i heard that last okay. night yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah one and a half is for psychos it's like <laughs> anything it's like when people fast forward their shit on four and you're like dude you're out of you can't possibly get it right like don't yeah. just go to three and you can monitor it like one and a quarter is reasonable yeah 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 I remember people said uh, JFK was a speed reader, but I also remember that he was also addicted to speed also. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. He, I think he was also one of the fastest talkers ever. I think he has some record in, in a speech for like fastest speech, you know, in yeah. terms of like words in three minutes ever. Great I'm guy. sure the, the Benny's help. Um, <laughs> he could have been an auctioneer <laughs> then if, yeah. president didn't yeah. work out that's oh he would have been a great auctioneer i wish if if robin williams were still alive he would do that bit yeah <laughs> jfk the auctioneer that would be, he'd be perfect for that <laughs> ah, <JFK. Yeah. laughs> um well i i'll talk about what brought us to this moment here uh we did yeah. i did an episode of my horrible experience of going to woodstock 99 Right. Um, and I, I detailed how disgusting and gross and, you know, how much of a ripoff it was. And I got a text from you kind of like commiserating yeah. as a uh, a brother of Woodstock as well. Uh, but you actually went to 1994's festival. That's correct. So, yes, when I heard uh, that episode, that was very funny, by the way. And it's just it's fun to talk about shit from the 90s, as I'm sure you guys have yeah. realized. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, the, I, I realized when I was coming on here that 94, it was like 99 was the disaster. Um, you know, it's it was the famous disaster, the fires and the rapes and the deaths. <laughs> um, but I actually and I sort of thought my Woodstock was boring, 94. So I, I looked it up and a few people died there. Mm hmm. <clears throat> An equal well, it wasn't number. that boring, you know? <laughs> yeah, but somebody died of, like, diabetes. Or, or some, there was something weird. Okay, well, I there, take that back. Then. <laughs> there was one 45-year-old guy that was there. I talked about that in the original podcast, in which yeah. I was like, what the hell is this guy doing at Woodstock 94? Is he a big dude fan? <laughs> Duke, nice. That's a good word to get in there. A big Dookie fan. Oh. First Dookie of the podcast. That's right. Love it. Not the last. Not the last. No. Many to come. Uh, yeah. So obviously, when you did your '99 stuff, it made me think of going in '94. 
And 90, it was a weird uh, thing because I'm not like a fe- music festival guy. Like even at that time, I was 21. So if I had been a festival guy, it would have been the perfect time. But I was like a, I like to go to one concert, maybe. Just the, the idea of a weekend was not on my radar. But <laughs> I have a friend, as you know. Uh, the friend is always the one who talks you into this fucking shit. So yep. I have Same a here. friend. Yeah, I have a friend, and this is 90s name, uh, Bonanza. His name is Slater. Nice. So my, <laughs> so my, friend's, my friend Slater, who's a fantastic guy, but he's just absolutely the best salesman for this kind of shit. And he's also a little older than I am, which at that time mattered. He was like a senior when I was a freshman in college. So I would always like look up to oh, Slater. We're going to Slater's place. And Slater has a huge <laughs> bomb. You know, like everything Slater did was great. Textbook so this, Slater. Exactly. <laughs> so he's textbook classic slates. So he starts giving me this whole thing about, oh, you know, Woodstock too. And like listing the band. and the almonds are going to be there. The almonds were a big thing for all of us back then. So I, I did, I was looking forward to that. That was like a, a highlight. Then he listed 10 other bands I could give a shit about, really, just didn't care. Uh, among them, Aerosmith, which you, <laughs> rep, you know, yeah. obviously Red Sox at. Yeah, Marshfield now. Spectacular. Yeah, it's like, we're we're just, we're good on Aerosmith. If you're from Massachusetts, it's yeah. like, yeah, we they're good, but w- we've had enough. Yeah. Um, they were my first concert at Alpine Valley, 1999. Wow. Oh, 99 first yeah. concert. Wow. You make but that I'm sound like it's Boston, like it's like though. you make that no? sound like it's like Altamont or something like yeah. you know, Alpine. <laughs> <laughs> Alpine well, 99, dude, famous. It was my Altamont, except <laughs> nobody died. Oh uh, yeah, we had three people were crushed on stage during two looks like the lady. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did by the way, did they perform that? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, and what do you think they closed, closed with? with? Uh, Dream on. No, the Armageddon with, song. I, I don't want to miss a thing. Oh, yeah. that's I, that. Actually, it's a better closing song. I gotta say, <laughs> it's more it's more dramatic. Yeah, it's it more car, more current too. People and it was yeah, that. it was current at that time. Yeah, hey, that song has uh, stood the test of time. Anyway, oh, so it's I, a I karaoke get, favorite. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Not, that's me, not a good thing. But count me out for that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll go to. So, I'll be in the bathroom. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, and one so, more thing of note about yeah. Aerosmith is they played Wayne Stock shortly before Woodstock uh, '94. Yeah, yes. Nice. <laughs> Alejandro's right. great with the connections. <laughs> yeah, that Wayne Wayne Stock was great. It's funny, Wayne's World two, uh, while not being as good had some very funny shit in it. Yeah. Like the the whole naked Indian thing made me laugh at the time because of the connection to The Doors, which yep. was a movie that I loved. And so seeing that kind of shit on was was very funny. And also, like, that reference does not stand the test of time. If you <laughs> that with somebody today, they're going to have no idea what's happening. Yeah. It was very of a moment. So Most anyway. Mike Myers stuff. Yeah. I get roped in. Long story short, I get roped into Woodstock 94. Not only do am I paying full price, which I believe was it was like 150 bucks or something, which is not nothing. Yeah. Uh, and I, somehow I'm in charge of getting the tent. So I have to go like and you know me, I'm a, I'm a Jew from suburban Boston. Like I, <laughs> when I go into like a sporting goods, you know, I, I would get lost in a Bass Pro Shop. So I go, I go in and I buy a fucking expensive tent with all the bending poles and, you know, all, all that kind of shit. Um, Cause again, Boston Jewish suburbs, parents are, were like, are we, we'll get we, you the best tent. With all the bells and whistles and everything. It, I don't, what bells and whistles does a tent have? More zippers? <laughs> More windows? <laughs> yeah. it, had, it had a bunch of zippers. And extra and, pole. So the, the, the complication with this whole thing was um, I had a college girlfriend and, but this was during the summer. So we were in different places. And so my buddy Slater's like, I'm bringing two chicks, one, you know, one for you. I'm like, all right, like, let's do it. <laughs> and then my college girlfriend was like, you're going to Woodstock. I want to go with you. 
And Uh-oh. so there was a weird situation <laughs> where like, I ended up, of course, because I caved to everything, like bringing my girlfriend in there, these, <laughs> my friend and these two other women there, we're all in the same tent. Uh, and there were a few questions asked sort of along the line from my girlfriend, sort of like, you you promised she wasn't here for you. I'm like, no, I don't know what the fuck. It's fucking Slater, man. He's crazy. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, instantly within a half an hour, all the food is gone. All the drinks are gone. Not ours, like at the festival. Oh like my you, everybody, God. you could hear word was rippling through the crowd. Like they're already out of soda. Like they're gone. <laughs> you know, they're out of soda. They're, and it was sponsored by Pepsi. Wow, the- the trouble that Woodstock '94 was no, we ran out of soda. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I know. But this is this was the first indication of things that just everything was going to be a little off. Not not tragically off like you got. Yeah, everything yeah. was just going to be off enough to make it terrible. Uncomfortable. So yeah. we find a tenting spot, which is its own ridiculous challenge. Like to even find a patch of dirt like that didn't have a tent coming from somewhere else was was tough so we find a spot we're setting up right next to us comes crashing in these like three very rednecky guys but were friendly to us because they were right next to us so it became that instant thing of like hey we're we're here in woodstock (laughs) but they were from west virginia they had the full mullets like back when mullet was in its prime (laughs) full mullets and just instantly like getting drunk and offering us like quaaludes or some ridiculous kind of downer thing Let's which we were loose, like oh, thanks man. <laughs> uh, it's a weird hillbilly prescription drug yeah. or something. And, yeah. but to fast forward to them a little later in the festival one of the you, you'll find out the theme of this is i stayed in the tent most of the time but there <laughs> were a few there were a few Same. times there were a few times when i went out to try and check out you know one of the acts and one of the times I went out, which was like a day later, I saw from across like 100,000 people, you know, just very far looking into a big crowd. I could see those three rednecks. They had stolen uh, the, all the people that worked there were wearing these yellow T-shirts that said like Peacekeeper. Yeah. And like, peace uh, you know, a little rainbow on the yeah, Peace <laughs> Patrol. And so they had stolen, presumably, and probably beat the shit out of three <laughs> Peace Patrol officers <laughs> were now wearing the shirts and using them to elbow people in the back of the head as they made their way up to towards the stage of like some <laughs> anonymous, you know, kind of 90s dreck, like <laughs> not good enough to be, you know, Metallica or Nine Inch Nails, just some kind of loud driving thing. And they were just yeah. pummeling <laughs> out of the way they could have assassinated uh, bob dylan or something i know right <laughs> well but by the way dylan was not one of the people i went to go see okay. <laughs> i'm just i'm incredibly lazy and i only have a few you know a certain amount of energy in me i'm like i'm going to the allman brothers band <laughs> like and maybe i'll sort of drift in the back of like i think on day three like orleans was there i'm like i'd like to hear some orleans <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you really rocked it. Yeah, what a wild 21-year-old. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I always say that if I had been at the original Woodstock, I would have uh, watched Sha Na Na and left. <laughs> <laughs> like, that would have been it. I'd be like, okay, I've seen all I need to see now. Thank you. Um, well, I... Re- Sorry. No, go ahead, Mark. Well, I wanted to ask a question, like, uh, at some point, I think I asked you in text. I wanted to know, because we've heard this narrative from MTV. There was either mud people or beer garden people i want to know which group of these people you were and if that was like a bullshit narrative that mtv was creating to have a story yes it was it was a bullshit narrative i mean the the answer is it it got fucking muddy that was what was happening coming day two i believe it just started to rain and it was it was just an annoying insistent you know it was like the rain scene in forrest gump Like, it just kind of, like, there was a little bit of stinging rain and sideways rain. Like, it just was raining a lot. It didn't let up when you'd go to bed or wake up. And, you know, at some point, the rain was going up. (laughs) Blocking it from underneath. Um, It was inside the tent. (laughs) Right. It it kind of, it just made everything wet and unpleasant. And so when you went out, you got kind of muddy but the people who were the assholes doing mud slides on mtv that was not i was no part of that like i didn't (laughs) i've never been that guy um anyway 
it, just a few uh, lowlights were being in the tent and my poor girlfriend at the time who had already gone through this like sort of failed investigation into the two extra women in the tent. Yeah. Um, like <laughs> there was some point when we were asleep and she was a very small petite person. And so she was on the very outside of like the, the sleeping order. So she was like where the tent kind of cornered almost like down on her <laughs> at one point in the middle of the night, the drunk hillbillies came back and absolutely stepped on her head. Oh my <laughs> God. But it was like, not, it wasn't just like, a, Oh, they kind of grazed it. It was like a, a, an event where she was fully, I could see the tent being pressed. Into the side <laughs> oh, of her no. Luckily the you ground the was, footprint. yeah. Luckily the ground was wet enough. Her head just probably went into That's the mud. Right. Yeah. I think it, there was a little give there to the soil. Thing. It made a face <laughs> print like han solo yeah, right. uh, 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 so that was you know a low light for her uh but a high light for everyone else well the, for, for those of us who are on hand it was kind of like you know witnessing some horrible spectacular tragedy like it was like seeing the thysman injury in live you know <laughs> it's like you'll just kind of be like yeah he's been weird um, but so i saw the allman brothers and like they were in a great groove at that era weirdly like from the late 80s to the mid 90s they were suddenly like awesome again so it was fun watching them i think i watched i went to see neil young i feel like he was there um, and I tried to make my way over to that, but there was the, the energy of the Neil Young fans did not match Neil Young's energy, and so yeah. it, nor mine. Like I wanted to see him like he was sitting there in some acoustic hall in Toronto, and instead it was just like the same people who were elbowing everybody in the head were there, and it was not great. Yeah. They didn't even know what music was going on. They were just there to like keep pushing <laughs> each other. And... Exactly, <laughs> shoving buddies at the Neil Young. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it, like most things that are anything longer than an hour, there's a certain point in it where I'm ready to go. So I was ready to go very soon after we got there. <laughs> I wish that I had had some major story of like, I was so fucked up. But I, th there was, I mean, I got stoned, but it wasn't like anything crazy. Um I just remember wet, unpleasant, expensive. And then all of a sudden there were twice as many people and everyone's like, everyone just got in for free. And I'm like, well, why did, <laughs> why did any of this happen? I like half of the people snuck in. Like it was only like, yeah. I think 150,000 suckers who paid for tickets or something. Yep. And then the rest, I think they lost control after day two or something. And everyone just stormed the gates yeah. and stuff. And that's, that's the big thing that they tried to do in 99 which brought them to a military base is they wanted to fortify the gates basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, this this was not thought out in that way and it, and it sounds like we read the same Wikipedia article. <laughs> <laughs> we do very deep uh research here. Yeah, no, me, me as well. We glanced at the Wikipedia. <laughs> right. Give it a quick skin. Um, yeah, um, but I, w I wish I had more, you know, like somebody stabbed someone in the neck with a broken Jack Daniels bottle, but yeah. uh, that, that didn't happen. Crushing someone's head, though, that's pretty good. Yeah, sure. You could, There's your promo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. Um, yeah. So you skipped Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. And Green Day. Those were the big acts yeah. that got the most press. I, I think I think with Nine Inch Nails, never cared about them. Never cared. Never gave a shit. I love Trent Reznor's music in movies. Like, I think it's awesome. Mm. Um, and I'm sure if I actually went back and listened to Nine Inch Nails, maybe I'd like it more. But it just I just missed it somehow. Some of those live sets are really good. The Nine Inch Nails, uh, some of those songs are really good. Like, I think he went... His big story was he went down in the mud with the mud people. Then he came back up and like rocked it or something. And like, that's the big, the story people tell. Yeah. Yeah. Still rolling with that wiki. The mud people. <laughs> what about, <laughs> some, let's hear about salt and pepper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but so then for, for green day, I was mildly interested in going, but that I think was probably the, you know, it was one of the most popular concerts there so the crush to even get there 
And I was already an old Jewish man at that point, even at 21. I'd be like, let's just stay in the tent. We have our Capri Suns. We have our uh, Chex Mix. You know, we, we did. We had all these weird, like, I think we had, we might have even had the uh, Durky Potato Sticks. Nice. Remember those? Oh, yeah. Like, like a round tin. Yes. <laughs> Your mom went to Roach Brothers to buy them before the, uh, you right. left. That's right. <laughs> did you have anything really 90s, like clear Pepsi? or kick no no i didn't the i guess the only sort of and i think this might have even been the late 80s but the only thing like that that i ever kind of got into was jolt oh i got big into jolt yeah Yeah. i used to think jolt was kind of cool because i love coke like i love regular coke and uh jolt to me seemed like this is like a double coke yeah you know (laughs) yeah it's like he's got 10 times the caffeine (laughs) seemed like you were doing drugs or loco or something yeah right uh yeah if i could have i would have maybe brought a two liter of uh, mandarin orange slice (laughs) i used to to enjoy that were how much like were, were they gouging people for like hot dogs and sandwiches and stuff there like they were in 99 or was it kind of mild obviously the soda ran out very quickly everything ran out so quickly i don't think i ever got a chance to investigate but i'm i mean i'm certain that the prices were for the time outrageous but now today would be cheap Wow. So you'd be yeah. like, they're charging five dollars a hot dog, and you're like, oh, that's about right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did it make you never want to go to a festival or a concert oh. ever again? Because that's what Woodstock '99 did to me. I never wanted to go to any big crowd like that ever again. Well, it's interesting. I I've definitely been to many concerts since then, so I can't say that I'm not like a huge concert guy. But I'll, maybe I'll go to like one or two concerts a year, maybe. Or not in COVID, obviously. Hmm. But certainly never would want to go to a festival again. And and when I moved out to L.A. and people are like, we're going to Burning Man. I'm like, have fun. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, be, <laughs> yeah. I'll be here on the couch. Uh, okay. Yeah, that feels disgusting and dry. And, you know, it's just not something I would never sign up for anything like that ever again, because you just <laughs> never know what's going to happen. And it only created more. It was it's just like they created more, you know, you hear like, oh, you're going to Bonnaroo, are you going to Goosh? Like it, it just all these <laughs> new festivals. You're like, I've never heard of what's Goosh. <laughs> Goosh. <laughs> uh, where a place where Huba Stank is the headliner. Like they yeah. sign up for that. Yeah, well that that's the thing too now with all the festivals and they have their standard signage where it's like Katy Perry in slightly larger letters and like, you know, yeah. two other people and one band in larger letters and then everybody else. And, yeah, I, you know, it, it's it, it's funny looking back on the Woodstock lineup, not, especially 94, you'd have to imagine that it would have been it was kind of impressive when you look at the names of all the bands that were there. But that makes sense, given the fact that everybody glorifies the original Woodstock above and beyond. And in the music world, to be part of something like that, I think in 94 seemed appealing in 99, a little less so. And then never again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they were definitely hitting that hard, like the 60s nostalgia at that 94 one Mm -hmm. where they they tried a little bit to bring that up in 99 but it was just like the the lineup just made no sense it was a complete antithesis of everything 69 was oh totally and i love didn't you guys were making the point that that maybe like the the trump voters could sort of be traced back to woodstock 99 did you say that (laughs) yeah it it felt like that january 6 in woodstock 99 there were two marking points in american history (laughs) and everything was leading up to that moment and everything like they all met at woodstock 99 basically Uh, by the way if if you had the time and energy that would be a fantastic documentary if you could cross reference like i'm sure there got to be like maybe a dozen people who were at woodstock 99 and who stormed the capitol <laughs> it's the nexus I mean, I, point <laughs> i felt that vibe like i was saying in the uh the original uh podcast talking about like a lot of the guys there seemed like they were like jesse uh no what's it called like the, the weird uncle from uh better call saul <laughs> like uh <laughs> oh, jesse the Nazi uncle? Uncle. <laughs> yeah the nazi like that whole group 
was at Woodstock 99, I feel like. And <laughs> they were all around me. Like you had those nice West Virginia people. Nice. By, by the time 99 came around, those guys like had guns and knives and they were ready to like fight everyone there. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, no, thankfully we were still five years away from that, which is crazy. The, the sort of slippage in a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, well, so we didn't want to take too much of your time, but one thing we wanted to do here is our big mm -hmm. thing on the podcast, the pop culture flash. Sure. So we wanted to do one really quick for August uh, 1994. Yeah. For Woodstock 99 in Socrates, New York. We wanted to do a quick top three movies and top three music. Um, and I don't know. I guess I wasn't surprised at any of these, but it was it was fun to go back and see what was going on. Well, number, of course, Gump had to be up there. I was just going to get into that in a second. But number three, top movie of August 12th is The Mask was number three at this time. Smoking. Okay. <laughs> Jim Carrey's uh, second of his big three 94 movies. Yeah. Yeah. He was on fire. And also, I think World Meet Cameron Diaz. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that was, I, I don't think I had seen her before. And she made quite an impression on me. Yeah. Was something yeah. about Mary after that? Oh, yeah. That was 95. Oh, was it? Way after. 97? It was like or five Frank years Kyle, after. this was her introducing Cameron Diaz, her first role. <laughs> don't let him, don't let him get you down. Look at that Red Sox hat on too tight, buddy. Um, but num number two is, as you said, Forrest Gump. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, by the way, I think it's, I think you can make an argument that it's the greatest movie of all time. I think that it's a 10... I know this doesn't make sense on its face. It's a 10 quadrant movie. You have <laughs> men, women, young, old, black, white, Democrat, Republican, gay, straight. 10. <laughs> mentally, <laughs> mentally handicapped, 11. <laughs> 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those are all the people. Everybody, everybody loves Forrest Gump. Like mm -hmm. what, what group doesn't like Forrest Gump? There's no group. It, it doesn't even, it wouldn't even polarize today's world. Yeah. There's you know? been conversations out there. There's been a, you know, retroactive look at Forrest Gump and people have some issues with it. What, like, <laughs> like what? Like the, I... Je the Jenny stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The age stuff, the Jenny stuff. Um, yeah. I think some of the, the political stuff and, I don't know. I, I, I don't really look that deep into it, but I know there's Is been some sort of like m making a hero out of like the one guy who, you know, was against racism and it, <laughs> it sort of makes it seem like we were all like that. Yeah. Or like he, he was too stupid to really understand, you know, what was going on. I don't know. Oh, that is looking way too deep into mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, I have we'll a move question, on. Though. <laughs> what what? the would the crowd at Woodstock 99 be fans of Forrest Gump? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think Selkin's right. I think it does. That That's why it kind of reaches everyone because everyone could take one bit out of that and, you know, and get something good out of it. I don't know. Totally. Maybe. Yeah. There's yeah. a yeah. Venn yeah. diagram where it's Limp Biscuit fans and Forrest Gump fans, and there's a <laughs> tiny <laughs> little overlap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like, quadrant scumbag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that Venn diagram is like two moons kissing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number one. Is it so okay, you want to make a guess of what number one well, is? Well, I was there? trying to think that because Forrest Gump was so big that I can't even think of what would but that's possibly later in the summer's run, so I think it gave a chance for a I newer know. movie coming out. Right, right. I'm trying to think. Well, maybe, oh wait, I have a guess. I have a guess. And it was a terrible movie. <laughs> I'm going to guess The Last Action Hero. Oh, that's a good guess, but no. Oh, good guess. Uh, wrong no. summer. That was the summer before. Fuck. You'll, ne you'll never get this. It's clear and present danger. I loved that. I love it too. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I had guessed that. I yeah. wish I had guessed that movie. Good a for mo Harrison Ford. A movie like that would never be number one in a summer month ever. No, well, now it would be a four part mini series on, you know, Amazon, which it is. Yeah. 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 It, yeah the John Krasinski or whatever. Um, yeah. Newton Native. Um... Oh, Newton's own. <laughs> hey, where, Newton's where, own. where is he from? Wobbin? <laughs> yeah. Wobbin, I used to love that. Those the, the guy over the tea would always just 
a Boston accent, but now it's a it's a robot lady or something. <laughs> oh you know? right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, Sullivan Square. Um, <laughs> Uh, so well, let's move over to music here, because um, that's more pertinent to what we're yeah. talking about. Oh, yeah. Number three, top song right now, Coolio, Fantastic Voyage, rest in peace. Yeah, that's a good song. It's a fun song. Yeah, that was a good summer song. Yeah. Uh, jam, number, they call it. A summer jam. <laughs> summer jam, that's right. That's right. <laughs> He's right, guys. <laughs> Coolio re- recently passed away, uh, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Did you do a pod about him? <laughs> we'll be Mark, talking about him on what about coolio <laughs> no mom we haven't done the one about coolio yet. <laughs> uh, you, uh, my a buddy of mine he was my first boss out in la named his name is uh billy kimball and he lived in this house uh in off of outpost circle you guys know where that is it's like off of anyway yeah um it was this cool house it had a pool you know what the fuck did i know and uh the previous owner was coolio Oh wow! Yeah, so so pretty close, pretty deep connection with him right here. Basically, you were very good friends. Yeah, uh, we like to call him. <laughs> You're gonna dedicate your next book to him. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> for two, I swear by all for one. I that, swear. That was a jam. Oh, garbage. <laughs> <laughs> that feels like a song they would go on uh beverly hills 90210 to play or something oh hell yeah oh well now you're winning me back that was, <laughs> I, 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 I like that show i used to watch that show all the time beverly hills 90, yeah i i loved all that show that was amazing uh shannon doherty came on and you know there was a big fervor of her like starting fights with all the other cast members and stuff yeah, it, it only added to my attraction to her. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you watch the show again, what, her eyes are off kilter. Just, it, it, like whenever, it, just whenever you see her again, or if you ever want to watch it, it's on Paramount Plus, I believe, which is has a lot of goodies on there, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, her eyes, one eye is much higher than the other. <laughs> Really? It makes a lot I, of sense. You're going to find <laughs> something I, wrong with someone that attractive. There's got to be something. Exactly. One thing. No, no, but it, it, it added to it. I don't know why. <laughs> like uh, Megan Fox, right, you, Kyle? You won't go out on a date with me, whatever. Your eyes aren't level anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to make you feel better as you're rejected. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Aaron Spelling put his daughter in there, which, you know, yeah. she was pretty good as Donna. I like I believed it. Hey, Donna Martin graduates. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a whole episode where everyone was Wait, chanting that over. Did she over. kill someone in a DUI accident and everyone like ma- uh, demanded that she graduate? In real life. Got- <laughs> no, she didn't kill someone. No. No. She, no, she she got drunk and she drove a car or something. Well, I, I don't remember the specifics of why she was in trouble. Yeah. Well, but... I feel like she should not have graduated. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, I get it. <laughs> you need to go on Paramount Plus and watch that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll Find check out it what out. happened. I'll give you a full report. Uh number one, stay by Lisa Loeb. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, loved it. Number one, still love yeah, it. Num- I know Coolio must have been like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> Did she she had a, still- Lisa Loeb had a weird dating show like ten years ago where people were vying to like win the heart of Lisa Loeb. It's so oh, weird. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it was way too late. It's way too weird. People, she had a one hit wonder back in the day, and then like 20 years later, she's trying to capitalize on it on a dating show. That is very, very strange. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was in a, I saw her, she lived in my neighborhood when I lived uh, some, somewhere else in the valley here, and I saw her on the next door app asking people if they, they saw her dog. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> the updates are getting sadder and sadder for her. <laughs> yeah, I thought the no. dating show was a drop-off. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> and like 40 people commented underneath, you say... <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh, now hey mark have, have these guys seen uh one of my favorite videos of all time which happens to be of you 
<laughs> is oh, this the, the one where I'm doing commercial? stand up and the, yes. and the mic falls yeah. out? Yes. Um, no, I could send it to him though. I oh, try not got, to. I try not to got, offer my embarrassment to other people. Well, no, but by the way, what better topic for death and entertainment than that <laughs> moment? You've got to dissect that moment. And I'll put is, it on the Instagram. As context, your buddy, your good friend Mike D, uh, mm -hmm. showed me this video, uh, and it's of Rep getting up. Where is that, by the way? It's a very... uh, it's at Rock Paper uh, on Sunset. It was like a weird coffee shop that they did stand up out of. Right, so it's already <laughs> it's already a shitty circumstance. <laughs> you see Rep get up on the stage, and he says the first line is what kills me. He goes, "Hey guys, thanks for sticking around." So you already know he laughs. <laughs>, laughs. It's just like it's just, and anyone who's done stand up knows how would that feeling like if even if you're last at caroline's it sucks yeah so if you're yeah. last at the fucking nothing coffee shop it's, <laughs> it's terrible <laughs> so he says hey guys thanks for sticking around how you doing tonight and within a millisecond the mic cord just drops <laughs> out and slams onto the stage with great sound like a gunshot <laughs> and it's the stage and that's the end of the video. It's literally like a four second video that is maybe the funniest four seconds. We should put that on TikTok. That has yeah, to. Uh, <laughs> put on there too. It'll just yeah. repeat over and over. And I'm over. telling you that would that could that would be a funny video if I didn't know you. Yeah. And the fact that I do Out know you, context, makes, yeah. it makes it even funnier. Death of a set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> death, death of a comedy career. <laughs> hey, it's alive and well here on this, my friend. Yes. It's alive here. I like that the the Family Guy writers room is doing like a Sapruder level like an analyzation of that oh. video. Yes, oh, you can you trust me. We have our best minds on it. We have we have G Gary Janetti is sitting there watching it. Like it's the saddest part is when you know like <laughs> breaking it apart. <laughs> <laughs> yikes that's amazing um yeah i'll i guess i'll offer that up now and just uh yeah, please do i'll, please I'll, I'll have release, to. It, release yeah. it to the die world and stuff the fans and, uh, demand it yeah the fans <laughs> demand it <laughs> um alec is there anything else you wanted to add about woodstock 94 that uh that that like, like a memory or something or something good or like a a bad memory oh jesus <laughs> i mean i i think i you know the the stepping on the head was good and bad, <laughs> as we can all see. And that's what life is. It's the sweet and the sour. Yeah. Um, who had but, a worse yeah. time than your girlfriend at that time? The, she What's went that? there. I said, who had a worse time? I think she probably had the worst time than anyone at that concert. She showed yeah. up, originally not even invited, and right. then she gets there to find a woman that you were probably going to cheat on her with. And then she literally gets yeah. shoved in the corner of a tent and her head stepped on. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That pretty much sums it up. <laughs> but, but there were there were some wonderful conversations with me in between yeah. the <laughs> Oh, to be a fly on the wall of that tent. Yeah, well, there were some. There were many. <laughs> I would love to see you there because you're such like a homebody. Yeah. But now you're like a homebody but in this tent <laughs> yes. at a festival. Yes. <laughs> I will find the most comfortable place where I can sit as long as possible. And you just, you, couldn't sit, you couldn't sit down anywhere. That's that's my complaint about Woodstock. There's no place to sit down <laughs> for crying out loud. Uh, no, no Pepsi my, and no my, seats. My, and no Pepsi, <laughs> no sitting down. My, I would say my happiest memory was like, I have a vivid memory of walking out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think I think I said Woodstock ninety nine. I left there like uh, the helicopter scene at end of Platoon. You know, Will, 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 Willem Dafoe gets shot like the, like we left my buddy Sully behind or something, and that was yeah. him. That's like clear and present danger. Yeah, that too. Oh, that, yes. oh, you got to get out of here. Yeah. Um, you should have seen that instead of gone to Woodstock ninety four. I would have. I should have. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. I would have loved. I mean, I, I've seen Clear and Present Danger probably 15 to 20 times. Wow. I know it quite well. Damn. You are a wow. fan. Yeah. yeah. I'm going out on top on this podcast. I'm going out <laughs> out <laughs> pushing, pushing all my chips in. in the yeah. and present danger hand. I know more about it than any of you. Yeah. You're yeah. Praying, praying at the altar of Jack Ryan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, well, I... 
obviously everyone knows you from Family Guy. You're a great writer there. One of the funniest people on Twitter and is uh, the podcast, a, a disgusting, a typical disgusting display. There we go. I take yes. that again. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing podcast, a typical disgusting display. Hey. Rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> which is based off the uh, Johnny Most line that you guys took that from, which uh, I think is amazing. And you have the amazing intro by Craig Kilborn, which is what a, one of my favorite uh, talk show hosts of all time, Gone Too Soon. <laughs> yeah, he's still alive. By the way. Yeah. He's still alive. Like, he left the business too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He left left with one finger in the air, like Larry Bird, three point contest. <laughs> While he's getting pushed out the door. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, Salkin, thank you so much for joining us and talking about your experience at Woodstock '99. Uh, this has been amazing. Yeah, no, Woodstock '94. I know I would have killed myself at '94. <laughs> yeah. <a> brave man. <laughs> no, thank you guys for having me. I really love your podcast. So thank you. Keep it. I I really got my fingers crossed that people will keep dying. Yeah. So you guys <laughs> having interesting <laughs> cases to look at. I trust it will continue and we'll yes. be in business. So. Yep. But uh, cool, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. You have just heard a true Hollywood murder mystery. I have never seen anything like this before. The movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. <laughs>